It's Platt, and today we head to Italy. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is Beer Moretti La Tentica. Uh, obviously comes to us from Italy. Little background into Beer Moretti. The company and brewery was founded in 1859 by a gentleman named Luigi Moretti in Unadine, Unadine, Italy. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, located in northeast Italy. Uh, the area at the time was part of the Austrian Empire. Now think about it. This company's been around long enough that they were founded during empires. So, you know, you know, it's kind of an old uh, brand. That first year, they ended up producing about 250,000 liters of beer. So, a pretty good little start. The uh, Moretti family ended up owning the company all the way till 1989 when they sold out to a regional consortium of uh, different breweries. Uh, a few years later, 1992, the original brewery was closed, but they kept production in the region. Now, of course, like a lot of these other stories, you know, these breweries get founded, the family holds on to it a while, then eventually the big uh, beer conglomerates come through, and in 1996, Heineken showed up with a lot of money and purchased the brand. Now, they ended up kind of splitting off the company or, or kind of a, create a separate corporate structure. Uh, they ended up calling it Bira Castella Group. It was basically to work around Italian antitrust laws. They'd gotten in a little trouble. Heineken was already, of course, a major player in any of the European countries as far as their beer market. And then when they purchased Beer Moretti, the Italian government said, well, you're a little too big. So they kind of spun things off, but it, the brand's still controlled by Heineken. Uh, eventually, in 2015, Heineken decided to expand the brand, uh, create a new, some new lines of beers, including... Uh, a special line that was dedicated to the culinary influences of six different regions in Italy, uh, Tuscany, Sicily, Piedmont, what have you. Uh, really some interesting beers. Uh, speaking of beers, we're going to talk about the guy on the front of the beer. Yes, uh, if you've drank this beer before, you know some mustache gentleman enjoying a beer. What's the story? Yeah, well, it's not the founder of the brewery and it actually has nothing to do with the actual brewery itself. Uh, it, the story dates back to 1942 when Lau Moretti was kind of walking through town one day and noticed a gentleman, mustache gentleman, just enjoying a beer outside, just kind of loving life. And he says, that guy represents our brand. That guy just makes you think beer. And he asked the gentleman, hey, can I take your picture? And the gentleman said yes. And he took the picture and had an artist uh, recreate the picture, and that is what's on the bottle. So it'd be, it'd be almost like uh, if one of the uh, Bush family saw me at a bar drinking a Budweiser, and like, that guy's Budweiser, let's take his picture. Uh, if you want to take my picture, we can make a deal. <laughs> anyway, so I thought that was kind of a cool story about, because I've seen this guy on bottles of Moretti for years, so I thought that was kind of a cool story. Uh, speaking of their beers, they do have, the, they're more than just this particular beer. They have a pretty nice line of beers. Uh, one of the other of their brands I've tried before, or beers I've tried before, which I think is real nice, is the La Rosa. It's a 7.2% Doppelbach style beer. Real nice beer. Uh, they have a Grand Cru that's an amber-colored ale that's actually produced in Belgium. It's, it's done in that kind of style, which is kind of interesting. An Italian company producing a Belgian-style beer, but it works. Uh, there's La Bianca, which is a 5% alcohol by volume Weiss beer. And then last but not least, the Alla Siciliana. It is a, a lager produced with orange blossoms that come from uh, Sicily. It's part of that kind of culinary line they came up with. Well, before we try this particular beer, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd briefly talk to you about Italian beers just in general. Now, I'm sure you're kind of like I used to be, in the sense that like Italy, well, they make wine. And that's true. They're the largest producer of wine. They're the largest consumer of wine. Uh, they actually produce more than France. France is more known for high-end wines. But as far as just sheer volume of uh, fun grape juice, it's Italy. 
That being said, though, there's more to the story. They actually do have some really nice beers. I remember a few years ago attending an international beer festival at the Venetian, and we you know, spent some time in the German section. Obviously, we spent a lot of time in the Belgian section. But got to the Italian section, and I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, a nice variety of beers, nice complexity, well-executed beers. I was kind of... You know, worried that, all right, I'm just going to get a generic, pale, slightly skunky, pale lager in a green bottle. Pretty much what you do see out of, out of a lot of the European countries. Again, it's similar to our generic kind of American lager, you know, your Bud Miller Coors. But again, I was pleasantly surprised. And you, you kind of do a little research, you realize there's more to it. There's, it they're not a wine-only country. Um, actually, beer dates... In Italy dates all the way back to the Phoenicians that traded beer in Sicily back in the 7th century BC. Now as far as commercial production of beer goes, uh, a company named Rur claims to have started producing beer commercially in Italy in 1829. That was before there's even officially a country of uh, Italy. If that date holds true, again they are the first commercial brewer in Italy. Now besides Beer Moretti, there's several other brands. There's uh, Beer Rofo. Uh, Peretti, uh, Ishnuza, hopefully I'm saying that right, uh, which is also owned by Heineken and was founded all the way back in uh, 1912. And of course, probably the most popular Italian beer is Peroni. Well, with that being said, let's try this Italian beer. All right, we got a nice light white head, um, kind of a darker golden color. Um, I would say probably a little darker again than the generic green bottled European lager. A little malt, a little hops. Um, not gonna say the typical skunk, but. Slight hint of that, but let's give her a try. That's just a nice, uh, little slightly sweet, malty lager. Uh, on the back end, I may pick up a slight bit of hops, but not, not too much hops, but this is just... Uh, it's nice beer. Uh, it's not complex or anything like that. They haven't reinvented the wheel. But to me, a little more mouthfeel, a little more body. Then again, it's just your very simple pale lager. Uh, because it's not in, in the green bottle, we're not getting that you know, extreme skunkiness. Not a lot of hops on the nose on there, but this beer's somewhat balanced. But I think what's nice about this beer, and I, I got a feeling part of the reason why it does click, especially with Italy, is because this, this seems like something that could go with a lot of foods, especially kind of spicier foods. You know, you you have like a, some Italian peppers, you know, with some meatballs, something like that. You know, like you know, some kind of spicy little kick. This beer probably could cut through that nicely. Also, too, because it doesn't have... You know, it's it's in the pale lager vein. Uh, it, it should work well with a lot of different foods. Uh, a good example in the wine world is champagne because it's light and bubbly. There's certain effervescence. It works well with a lot of different foods. Same with this style of beer to a certain extent. And again, food also is so important in Italy. And, and because of this, wines, you generally try to pair... Well, this flavor complements this and whatever. Uh, but again, this style of beer kind of works with everything, which makes it a lot easier in trying to pair up everything. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.